Now we're going to turn our attention to discussing sampling and estimation issues. We're going to start with a discussion of sampling and specifically random sampling. Now we can always take a sample of uh, objects or subjects from a population, but it's important to distinguish between a, a probability sample and a non-probability sample. In a probability sample, every uh, subject in the population has some non-zero chance of being selected, whereas in a non-probability sample, some subjects may not have a chance of being selected. Whenever possible, we want to use a probability sample uh, because it, is, it gives us a more accurate representation of the population, of course. And when thinking about making a probability sample, there are really uh, two major ways that we can do, do that. One is a simple random sample. In a simple random sample, every uh, subject in the population has an equal chance of being selected. So if there are 1,000 members of the population, everybody has a 1 over 1,000 chance of being selected. Uh, a different way to do a random sample is to do a stratified random sample. And I've written down the characteristics of that on the whiteboard, and it's important to understand how that's done. I've uh, defined already uh, the simple random sample, which each subject has the same chance of being selected. The stratified random sample uh, tries to preserve uh, uh, this idea of having some equal chance, but we also want to be sensitive to uh, the representation of the entire population uh, uh, in terms of uh, some characteristic that we are concerned about. And what we do in a stratified random sample is we divide a population into strata or sections according to some characteristic that we think is important. Then we select a simple random sample from each stratum, each, each character, each grouping, and, and we select them in proportion to their share of the population. So the, way, so the object of doing a stratified random sample is to capture the entire population, but to make sure that we uh, are representative of the population in a way that we think is important. So we're still doing a random sample, and within that random sample, uh, there, the, uh, the subjects within each stratum have an equal chance of getting, getting represented. Uh, for example, I have written down below these definitions a short example using, say, we want to collect a sample of 200 firms. And we think that it is important to... Uh, to uh, ca represent the population of firms by their uh, market value. So I think that there are three different types of firms uh, out there that I want uh, to make sure that I represent all of them. So for example, I have small cap firms, so firms with a capital that is, or market value that is under $200 million. And I define my mid caps being those companies with a market value of between $200 and $1,500 million. And finally, my large cap firms are those firms with a value of over $1,500 million. If I, if I know that the proportion of the population of all firms is 39% small cap, 44% mid cap, and 17% large cap, then when I go out to do my sampling, I'm going to find, uh, try to sample 78 small cap firms because 78 would be 39% of my 200. I would sample 88 uh, mid cap firms because 88 would be 44% of 200. And finally, I would try to sample 34 large cap firms because 34 is 17% of 200. Now that we've talked about sampling, we can move on to talk about things like sampling distributions and sampling error. The uh, purpose of taking a sample out of a population, after all, is to try to use the information from the sample to draw inferences about population parameters. So we're going to form statistics on the samples and try to make inferences about the population parameters. Now, when we do this, we know that we're not taking all of the uh, uh, members of the population when we form a sample. And so when we uh, form a sample, we are, we are going to have just an estimate of the population parameter, and, by, and chances are we're going to be wrong, either by a small amount or in some cases a very large amount. What we want to do is start to think about uh, how sampling and uh, sampling errors are related so that when we go to uh, try to make inferences about the population parameters, we can use uh, our understanding of statistics to make uh, a good quality or uh, valid inferences about the population parameters. So to do that, we, c we should start by thinking about sampling distributions and sampling errors. Now to do this, I want to go to the board to look at a little bit of, uh, of an example. Suppose we have a, uh, a population of uh, investment banks that do uh, equity underwriting, and I know that my population exists of only five investment banks, and this is the uh, population, uh, this, these are the numbers of uh, equity underwriting that they did in a past year. So one did $227 million worth, one did $89 million worth, one did $191 million, one did $173, and one did 145 
I write down the mu. Since this is my population, I can, I can form the, uh, the mean of this population. I found it to be 165. And all I did was add up the five uh, observations from the population, divide by five. So that is the true mean of my population. Now, I know that if I take a sample out of that, say a sample of size 2, uh, I'm going to uh, get another estimate of, my, uh, of a mean. I can take the sample mean of any sample that I set, and the uh, chances are that the sample mean is going to be different from the population mean. So I've done this for a, two, a, couple, of two, uh, a couple of simple samples. So suppose I take sample 1, and by uh, random chance I draw 227 and 173. I form the sample mean, which is x1 bar, uh, the one denoting my sample 1, and that's 227 plus 173 over 2, which is 200. Now, 200 is obviously different from 165, and we've made some kind of error. But the error should, uh, should only be due to the fact that I'm taking a random sample. If we look at sample 2, which again, suppose I, I put uh, the numbers back in the hat and draw them randomly, I get the sample of 89 and 145. The sample mean, uh, which I'm denoting x2 bar, is 89 plus 145 over 2, which is 117. Now, in this case, my sample has underestimated the population mean. So I can think about what the sample errors are. For sample 1, my sample error is the difference between my uh, estimate my uh, sample mean and the true population mean, which is 200 minus 165, or 35. For sample 2, my sampling error is uh, x2 bar minus mu, which is 117 minus 165, or minus 48. So if I take all the samples of size 2 from this population of 5 and form their uh, sample means, I can form the distribution of the sample errors. Uh, and and what I'm going to be thinking about in uh, trying to make inferences is what is the distribution of these sampling errors. And, and so if I know that distribution, then I can make better inferences about whether uh, the uh, sample statistics that I'm calculating are really close to estimating the true population parameters. Now, as a, as a final note, if we are able to form all possible samples of any given size uh, for, from a population and take the mean of their means, the mean of the sample means should be equal to the population mean because, again, the deviations, uh, uh, the, the sum of the deviations from the, uh, uh, from the mean of all the possible uh, observations is going to be zero, which means that if you're able to take all of the possible samples, then the, sam the mean of the sample mean should be equal to the true population mean. Uh, unfortunately, since we are taking a sample, it really implies that we can't do that, so we're going to have to rely on other techniques to try to make sure that we know that our... Uh, uh, that we're making valid inferences about the population parameters. So I'm going to be talking more about uh, sampling distributions and uh, how we can be sure that when we take something like a uh, sample mean that we're actually making a good estimate of a population mean. Fortunately, there's a powerful st statistical result called the central limit theorem which helps us think about that. I'm going to set up a, a description of the central limit theorem on the whiteboard and get back to that. All right, so looking at the whiteboard, I've set up a, uh, a discussion of basically what the upshot of the central limit theorem says. Um, it, to set this up again, remember that we've just talked about the fact that every sample that we select is going to have sampling error to it. So if there is sampling error, how do we know that uh, the statistics that we're calculating have any uh, uh, validity or any truth in them? Fortunately, the central limit theorem is a very powerful statement about uh, at least the sample means. And uh, it, is, it uh, applies to a population with a mean and a variance, but we're not making any distributional assumptions about the underlying population at all. And that is what's really powerful about the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem's upshot says that for a population with a mean and a variance, the sampling distribution of sample means x bar for, of all the samples of size n will be normally distributed with the following characteristics. So that x bar sub n, so by that I'm saying that the, uh, e the sample uh, means of all samples of size n is going to be normally distributed. So this is a random variable, keep in mind. It's a random variable that's distributed normally with mean mu and variance equal to sigma squared over n.